Over here, extend and retract. Okay, we need our battery switch on, basically for anything to work back here. So to press uh, or to get my slide out, out, I'm gonna push the extend button. Say I pushed it and nothing happened, right. it's gone to sleep. Watch what happens when I push it again. It wakes it up. Second time. Okay, so if it doesn't, if it doesn't come on right away, the switch is just going to sleep. You just push it a second time and it should wake it right up. Now what about, I noticed on his coach, you had to use the key from the ignition or something. I believe that's for the bunk above. Okay. Um, oh yes, and some coaches do have a ignition switch to slide out. So this one does not. So once so, it goes all the way out? And you have to drive with it closed. Please do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once it goes all the way out, basically it stops. Okay. Okay, let's start in the back and work our way forward. All right. Okay, I have to go over this. This is an emergency exit. Okay. Your slow rise blinds are really nice. nice. They go up and down real easily. Yes. To get out in an emergency, you're gonna lift up on this handle. You're permanently hinged off the top, out you go. Okay, if it does open, you wanna pull it tight. Make sure that it latches in place. Push on it. Make sure it stays in place. Okay. okay. You have a bedroom TV. Okay. And this is what I have to. Does it come out? And you can pull it out. I don't know if it does or not. Um, I say, how do you hook up the DVD? Player? It's gonna come out one way or another, and I think what you're gonna have to do is lift it up. Okay. Like probably lift up two inches and then you can pull it out. But there's no way to run the cable for the DVD player, right? Ah, uh, you know, they make it difficult. Um, of course. Yes, there, there, there's no spot for it. Right? You would have to put some kind of a shelf for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. You have a rooftop vent. Okay, if I turn my fan on, basically push it here and then I have four speeds on it. Okay, and then turn it off here. And then I can close it this way. You want to drive with those closed off? They last a lot longer, yes. Yeah, I guess they don't get blown away. Right. Okay. And then your bed basically just folds down. So you're going to pull it. It's on shock, so you got to kind of give it a pretty good pull. Okay. And then your mattress folds down. Okay. Okay. Over here is your radio. Okay. On this side? And it is for the speakers outside. Um, it's got speakers A and B. Um, they're both for outside. And then you have, uh, you know what, I wonder if the speakers A are inside. Let's see. Wow. So it's on. Loud, okay. It? Okay, so you have outside and inside. Okay. Nice. Easy peasy on that one, huh? Okay, let's see. The electrical pull out there. All right. This is for your computer? Uh, they are 12 port charging systems. Yes, you can plug your telephones into them, things like that. Nice. Okay. All right. You know what? Let's turn the AC on. Okay. Your air conditioner has to have 110 volt power. Okay. Okay. So you have to be plugged in or you have to run your generator. Oh, okay. Okay. That's. And the televisions have to have 110 volt power. So the generator. And the microwave. Those are the three things that have to have 110 volt power. So 110 volt is from your generator. So yes. we have the air conditioning, the TV, and the microwave. Correct. Okay. Okay. So over here. Back over here. On the monitor panel is the system for starting the generator. Okay. okay. Kind of like outside. This is my hour meter for the generator and a start and stop button. And I'm gonna do kind of like I did out there. I'm gonna push that stop button like I did on the generator till the light comes on. Now I'm primed, okay? Now that I'm primed, I'm gonna push and hold the start button. And I'm gonna hold that button anywhere between five to 15 seconds. It doesn't matter if I keep it pushed after it starts. But if it doesn't start after 15 seconds, I'm gonna let go of it, give it a five second rest, and then I'll try it again. Okay, you have 7.8 hours on there right now. That I've used? Or that it, has, it has been used, it, okay. it, yes. The hours go up, so the more, uh, did you hear that beep? Yes. We just got power to the coach. So it's about a 30 second delay before it gives you power to the coach. Okay, 
So the generator now is charging our batteries and we can run everything in the coach all at once. We can run the air conditioner, we can run the, the refrigerator, we can run the televisions, everything. Okay? So how long can we run on the generator? You want to run that generator as much as you can. Okay. The more you run it, the better it'll operate. Okay. The okay. less you run it, the worse it'll operate. Okay. Onan, the maker of the generator, wants you to use it a minimum of 30 minutes a month. Okay. Oh, nice. 30 minutes a month. Yeah. Got it. Yep. So, and then do you know how much runtime it gets off the thing of gas? Well, uh, it's a capacitor, it runs, right? It depends on how much you use electric on it. it and you can calc it out. This use, the microwave uses so many kilowatts per hour. Yeah. Uh, air conditioner uses so many kilowatts per hour. And you can, you know, you would have to keep track of how many hours you use everything. To, but ba basically, the best thing to do is watch your gas gauge. Okay. okay, so as long as there's gas in the engine, it runs. Correct. Okay. To a certain point. Once your gas gauge falls below a quarter of a tank, okay, then the it. generator will stop or not start. That way it gives you a quarter of a tank to drive to the next Perfect. gas station. Excellent. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay, so generator's running. Yes, uh, I just heard it beep, so we have power. So now we're going to go back here to the thermostat. Okay. Your air conditioner has to have 110 volt power. Okay. Right. So. I'm going to turn it to fan. Now, if I turn it to fan and fan only, all it's going to do is blow ambient air. It's not right. going to cool the coach until I flip it to the cool position. Like at home. Right. So there it is on cool. I have high and low fan. Okay. And then set it to set my temperature. Compressor kicks in. I felt it. Now we're going to be cooling the coach. Okay. If you put it in auto instead of fan high or low, What's going to happen is once it reaches that temperature or around that temperature, everything is going to shut off and right. then everything's going to come back on. So if you're a light sleeper, it may wake you up. Fan on, best position to have it in. Now, that's it. and then we have the generator. Now, when we hook up, we're not, when we're not dry camping and mm -hmm. we're hooked up mm -hmm. to the KOA or whatever, mm -hmm. so we're going to be on their electricity, right? Correct. So this will run not on the generator but on their electricity. Exactly. And do I have to do anything back there? Do I have to make sure the generator is off or does it automatically go off? You have to shut the generator off. Okay. Just like you turn it on and I'll show you okay. how to do that. Okay. Okay. All your AC vents are going to be throughout the top. Okay. All your heat vents will be throughout the bottom. Now when you rotate these, you might get a little bit of snow out of them because sometimes they still have that insulation in there. Right. Okay, so don't worry about it if the snow falls. Okay. Now what you don't want to do is close 50% of the vents. If you close more than 50% of these AC vents, the back of the air conditioner will freeze up, okay. it will stop running, it will take four to five hours for it to thaw out. Okay. Got it. So okay. no more than 50%. If I close these, it's going to force more air out of my ducted vents. Okay. okay. If I open these, it's going to cool this room off quicker. Got it. Okay. All right. So, so, never, so don't close those off. All Take right. I want to work my way from the back to the front so I don't forget it. Okay. You got overhead lights, and then you got lights above your cabinets. Nice. Okay. That's how it switches there. All okay. right. We're going in the bathroom. Okay. Bathroom. Uh, you know what? I'm going to turn on my water pump switch, and I'll show you where that's at. Over here on your monitor panel, your monitor panel's got all kinds of things on it. And there's my water pump switch. If I turn it on, the red light's going to come on. So there my water pump switch is on. Now, if we're camping or traveling down the road and we want water power, the water pressure, yeah. we need that water pump switch on. Okay. Remember the city water hookup I showed you outside, the hose one where you plug the hose in? Yes. You don't need the water pump switch on for that. Because it's going to be pressurized for the city. Okay. Got it. Okay. You have hot and cold on your shower, on off on the handle, okay? Then your toilet, you have a pedal. If I push it halfway down, it will fill the bowl. Once I'm done, I push it all the way down. It's gonna rinse and flush. Nice. Okay. Put chemical in the toilet. I bought some. Good. Put it before you use it. Put about a gallon of water in it. You can do that just by flushing it and holding it for 5, 10 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. Let, let water go into the tank. Then pour about 4 ounces of chemical in it. Nice. Or it's in your little packets. Okay, that's fine. Yep. And then that way, because you want water in there to break that packet down. Got it. So then that way it'll keep the stink down and it'll also break the paper down. Okay. <laughs> 
rooftop vent <coughs> basically cranks open and then you have a fan on the top. Okay. okay. All right. Um, GFCI protected outlet. That's the first spot you'll look for power problems in electricity. Basically, if it's been if it's been tripped, your little yellow light's going to be on. That's All if you I run into a problem and don't have any power anywhere? Right. So you just push your button and you should have power again. Okay. And this button here is? Overhead light. Got it. Okay. Here's the thermostat for my water heater. Oh, nice. It's set at 123 degrees. I think 124 is as high as it'll go. Okay. And then I can drop my temperature down to whatever I'd like it at. Okay. If I want to, I can turn it off. The screen goes blank, but the red light will always stay on. To turn it on, now if I use my hot water now, I'm not going to get any hot water out of it because it's in the off position. Okay. So I'm going to turn it on. My blue screen is on. So now when I open my tap, it will take about 15 to 30 seconds is that all? hot water. Is that fast even when I take a shower? It, it's that fast. It, 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 Water here. There's no tank. Correct. It will. So, so right now I've got hot water. That, that's, that's how really long cool. it took. That's how long it took to get hot water. Wow. Okay. And so they last a lot longer than the typical six gallons. That's what my friend has. The yeah. Six so gallons. he's he's out of hot water in six gallons. Right. That's why they have a hot cold shut off or the, the shut off on the handle. Up there. Okay. So you can preserve that hot water. Nice. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Got it. Okay. Now we're ready to roll. All right. Running a lot with this one, a lot of differences. Uh, there are a lot of differences. And I gotta tell you, Mother, I like yours a lot better. I do too. Let's see, what's, the, what, what's your friend have? He has a 24 1. Okay. You have two tables. You can oh, set them in either direction. Okay. okay. Um, and your table legs are here. When you put those table legs in, mm -hmm. I'm gonna show your daughter. Oh, okay. Right you I'm have a little tripod thing here. You line those up. Okay. Twist it in, and then this will tighten it down or loosen it up okay. so it doesn't wiggle. Okay, okay. So. so basically, I'm going to pop this off of here. Okay, I'm going to line those little things up. So I need to leave a screwdriver in here. Huh? Yeah, okay. definitely want to set the tools. Okay, twist it, and then I'm going to rotate this down, and that locks it into place. Nice. Then when I'm done, I'm going to loosen it, rotate it, and out. Okay, and then these here don't matter where they go. Just line them up. Okay. It's a nice little container carrier thing. There's one for the clean and one here. Okay. So there's a little thing here that just keeps them all nice in one place. Okay. Okay. You have an LP gas leak detector and a CO2 detector. Got it. Okay. I have to test it for you. I'm going to push the button right here. All the lights are going to come on and beep at us. And it's going to beep at us again. And it's going to go back to green light. Tell us that it's good. This is tied to your coach batteries underneath your steps. Okay. Okay. If your coach batteries get too low, if this they fall below, it point. will start beeping at you okay. every oh. 30 seconds telling you so to charge well, no. your batteries. Right. Okay. And we have to put it on generator. Correct. Or plug in. Or plug in. Okay. Behind here are going to be your fuses and your breakers. Okay. I'm going to push that door and it's going to pop open. These are all of my breakers for 110 volt, listed as to what they control. These are all of my 12 volt fuses, listed as to what they control. So if your water pump's not working, you're gonna wanna look at that fuse right there and see if it's blown. Nice. Okay? Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, let's see. I'm working my way down here. Okay, your doors, you're gonna, they lock into little holes up there, I'll push it down, pull it over, or it locks in place, pull this one down, or it locks in place. Nice. Now you see me, now you know. Down, then lock back into place. Nice. Okay? Microwave, 110 volt power only. Okay? Um, okay, and you have your dish and rotating tray in there okay now this is also a convection oven also um, now everything i cover is also covered in your reading material 
Okay, so if you're having any problems, that's the first spot you're going to go to is your reading material because sure. it gives you a wealth of information. Right. Okay, on your refrigerator, Norcold wants you to cool it down hours before you load it. Okay, yeah. if you can cool it down days before you load it, all the better. Okay, okay. auto, best position to have it in. Yeah. If I put it in auto, it's going to look for electricity. If it doesn't find electricity, it'll go to gas. Okay. Okay, if it doesn't find either one of them, it'll start flashing. Okay. And it will give you um, uh, a, a code basically with the flashes. But if it doesn't light, basically I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to try it again. Okay. If it still comes on flashing, I'm going to look see why I'm not getting electricity. Okay. I'm going to look at my GFCI on the bathroom. I'm going to look make sure that my GFCI or my, my breaker hasn't tripped on the power pole. Um, uh, Checking your fuses. Um, there you could check your fuses or your breakers. Yeah. So now when we when we shut it off in storage, just simply turn it off. Yep. And then when I when I turn it on the generator, mm -hmm. now when I do propane, how do I turn it on? It does it on gas. I put on gas. I just say I'm gonna put on gas. Yeah. You can run it strictly on gas. It's okay. Yeah. And yes, just put, you flip it to gas. Auto and auto will go between gas and propane. Correct. Yes. And that's the best position to have it in because let's say you're on gas. Okay, and you run out of gas, and your uh, camp or your hike, you know, or you're away from the camp, the things are going to get warm. Right. Okay, if I'm in the auto position, uh, you pay for your electricity when you get to a campsite. Right. Okay. So you may as well use the electricity instead of your gas. Okay. Okay. Right. So if I'm in the auto position and somebody kicks my cord out, we lose power somehow, it will automatically go to gas. Okay. So you're not going to lose any cold out of the refrigerator. It'll keep things cold. Okay. So at least a couple hours before, if not a day if before. It's, it's best, yeah. There's your coldest position, and there's your not-so-cold position. Okay. okay. So coldest right now. Are you guys going to use it traveling home? Well, probably not. Maybe for some water. Okay, maybe. Okay. okay. Now, take the remotes out of there. Can I take the what? There's a remote control in there. Oh, the remotes, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I'm going to pull your door open. Okay, you oh, have your manual. second set of keys. Got it. Okay. All your reading material here. Excellent. Okay. Um, all your remotes. It doesn't matter. They're all the same Xera TV. So okay. it doesn't matter which remote goes to what TV. Got it. Okay. Chemical, they give you a test bottle of chemical also. And little, that is for little, little small chemical for what? Yep, yeah, for your toilet. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when I close it, I want to hear it click. Good to go. And okay. that's the freezer. Freezer right here, yep. Up above. And you can put ice cream in there and have ice cream when you're camping. That's one of my favorite things to have when I go camping. <laughs> this is just uh, storage? Storage up in here. Awesome. Okay. So much storage. 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 Gotta have it. Gotta have it. All storage throughout here. Um, your blinds, a lot like the ones in the back, you're going to pull them down. They're going to slow rise up. Nice. Okay? Cooktop. You have to light it manually with a matchstick. Okay. okay. You're basically going to lift it up, rotate it. Push it in, put a match right to there, hold it for about five seconds, let go of it, and it should stay lit. If it doesn't stay lit, this little igniter here didn't get hot enough. Okay. That's what that igniter does. It gets hot, so hot that it leaves the gas valve open. If I just push it, light it, let go of it, it'll just go right back out. Okay. okay. You have to be careful, because if you turn it like that, gas will come out of it. Okay. Okay, so make sure they're in the off position when you're not using them. Alright. Let's see. That's uh, more like a camping stove versus the one he has, which is more like a... Yeah, like electric, a, it electric. Electric. Yeah. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Okay. okay. You have pilot lights. You have a pilot light behind here. When I put it into the gas mode, the back side, remember that door I took off for you? Right. There's a pilot no. light back in there that burns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your furnace. I haven't lit it for you yet, but remember I showed you how it gets hot out there? There's a flame behind there, and your water heater has a flame. Okay. okay. Uh, you have a flame here. Okay. When I need to get gasoline in the truck, I have to have all my standing pilot lights out. Okay. Typically, most people only travel with the refrigerator on. Okay. okay, so if I'm traveling down the road and I'm in gas or auto, either way, my, my refrigerator is cooling on gas, before I pull up to the pumps, I'm going to come back here, turn it to the off position, 
make sure I have all of my other appliances in the off position, okay. pull up to the pumps, get gasoline, pull away from the pumps, then turn I can turn my appliances back on. Okay. And this is automatically off until I light it with the match. Correct. And then you have okay. to shut it off. Now my water, water heater? Water heater is a, the button here and then a hot water. So I want to keep that in the off position when I pull up to the gas station. Okay. Yeah. In the furnace too, and I'll show you where that's at. <clears throat> Hold this place down for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now your monitor panel is going to give you a wealth of information of what's going on with your coach. Okay. My water pump is on. My red light is on. Okay. My generator is running. My red light is on. Okay. Um, there's my slide button. Remember my black and gray tanks? These are tank heaters. So if you're camping in climates that are colder than 32 degrees overnight, you can turn those on and it will heat them up, keep your holdings from freezing. Nice. Okay. My LP is gonna read up here on the top as is my fresh black and gray. My LP is full, my fresh tank is two thirds, and my black and gray should both read empty. Okay, your what is two thirds? Fresh so water is two thirds. So, fresh so your, water. your fresh water is at two thirds. Now my battery is going to read down here on the bottom. It reads as low, full, good, and charged or charging. Okay. So if I test my battery, I'm so, charged or charging right now because all four lights are on. Okay. okay. So if I'm plugged in or I'm running my generator and I'm not getting four lights on there when I check my battery, something's wrong. Either I'm not getting 110 volt into the coach, so I'm going to check my breakers. If my breakers are good, I'm going to check my GFCI. That's good. Then I'm going to check that fuse box down there. I opened the door up. There are two 40 amp fuses in there that charge the battery. Okay. okay. Now all this is your reading material, and you can also call me and ask me if you have any problem. I can really, I can run you through it on the phone. Okay. Simple. Okay. Okay. So that's my monitor panel telling me the levels of all my. LP is full, battery is charged or charging, fresh is two thirds, black and gray are both empty. So once I start using my shower, let's say I'm taking a half hour shower, it's gonna start to increase as I pour water into the sinks right. and bathtub, okay? So, and I can dump it once a day, twice a day, five times a day, or once a week, depending on how often I use it. So then I would just do the, the gray. If you want, yeah. The same you don't thing have with to the, black. Do the black. You don't have to do it, no. Okay. But just don't keep the gate valves open okay. down there in that storage compartment where I showed you. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it up here. So on your bed, you have a second set of keys, and that's all it's for, is for your bed. So if I turn it to the off position, it's not going to go up or down. That Got way it. keeps kids from, from getting hit with it. Okay. okay. So I'm going to turn to the on position. I can take my key out, and I can still use it. Okay. okay. Nice. But it has to be in the on position. Okay. And then I'm going to push the lower button. Do you have pins or anything to take out? Or no? No pins? they got locks on them, but they're not in. And I'll show okay. you how to lock them up. But it, it will lower to a certain point. I believe the chairs have to be either... Um, pulled back or rested backward to go all the way down. Yeah, because the, they'll, they'll hit. So these either have to be pulled back. Your ladder fits into here, that way you can climb up to your bed. Okay? Nice, and this is a twin. I still haven't looked to see what these look like, so I'm oh. Yeah, it's a twin. Okay. And your chairs rotate around 180 degrees so you can, you know, kind of join the party back here. This one here, um, once you rotate it around, it's kind of like wrestling an octopus, okay? okay. The steering wheel can be in the way, uh, things like that. So you'll, you may have to rotate it, hit the steering wheel, um, the you know, pull the chair forward or back, and yeah, so kind of you know, be patient with that thing so it can be tough. Now your lock is right here, and you should have little pins that go in there, and I don't remember seeing those anywhere. So I think we're going to have to order you pins for those things. Okay. 